Well, Monica Crowley served as Assistant Secretary of the Treasury in the Trump administration. She was Foreign Policy Assistant to President Richard Nixon, and she's also a best-selling author and political commentator. These days, she hosts the incredibly popular Monica Crowley podcast, giving her insights and analysis on all the current events of the day. Would you please welcome back one of our favorites, Monica Crowley. It's so good to have you back, Monica. Oh, it's always such a joy to join you, Governor. You know, I've got a million things to talk about with you because I want to get right to it. Midterms are coming up. Um, a lot of people think it's going to be pretty bad for the Democrats. Is that your assessment? I am increasingly optimistic that it is going to be a pretty good night for Republicans. And at the risk of jinxing all yeah. of this, <laughs> um, it does look like the trend lines when you look at the poll numbers and the average of polling, it does look like Republicans across the country are gaining a lot of traction with voters now that voters are really paying close attention to the races and the issues that really matter to them. The economy has not gotten better, it's gotten worse, and it's hitting every single family. I don't care what their politics are. Uh, there, there seems to always be just before an election what we call the momentum, the big mo, and it does not seem to be going the way of the party of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Joe Biden. D does that kind of give you that sense that th that's why things are turning as they are? Yeah, I mean, look, the Democrats have had unified control in Washington, D.C. since January of 2021. They've held the presidency, the Senate, and the House. And the American people are taking a look at what they have done with that unified power over the last two years, and they see an historic catastrophe in this country in every direction, whether it's the economy with skyrocketing inflation, slow to stagnant growth, um, gas prices off the charts where the average American can no longer really afford to live. The cost of living crisis is affecting every single American. The Founding Fathers, in all of their wisdom, Governor, set up a system that is, it's adversarial, but it's based on checks and balances. And for the last two years, the Democrats have had no checks and balances on them, and the country is going off a cliff as a result. So I think a lot of people have made the calculation like, okay, we're gonna hand some power back over to the Republicans, even just as a check or balance. And the Republicans are saying, look, we're gonna give you pro-growth economic policies like we had under President Trump. We're gonna make your cities and communities safer to the extent that we can. Something big happened this week. Tulsi Gabbard, she was formerly not just a Democratic Congresswoman. She's got some fans here in the audience. Yep. She's been on our show before. But she broke from her party and said, I will no longer be a Democrat. And she was very explicitly clear as to why. How, how big a deal was that, that she left and did it very publicly? It, it is a really big deal. And I did a whole monologue on my podcast about this recently um, as well, because I think it's a leading indicator for what we have seen over the last couple of years, but which is really gaining a lot of acceleration now which is that there are so many people in the Democrats' core constituencies, Latinos, Blacks, women, younger voters, that are hemorrhaging away from the Democratic Party for a lot of different reasons. But Tulsi Gabbard, she is a woman. She is a military veteran. She's an extraordinarily smart person. Yes. And in many ways, Governor, a classical liberal. Yeah. And she is saying, look, I have not left the Democratic Party. Democratic Party left me a long time ago when it decided to become a neo-Marxist party and engage in this ideological jihad to transform the country into this, this neo-communist kind of system. I don't want any part of that. And by the way, Tulsi Gabbard is going to be here next week in our theater on our show. We'll have a chance to chat with her. That's I'm great. looking forward to doing that. That's great. Um, I want to talk about some of the races that are really critical. You live in New York. The race for governor between Kathy Hochul, who is the uh, lieutenant governor, become governor because of Cuomo's resignation, being very seriously challenged by Congressman Lee Zeldin, who is a great guy. Yes. Is it possible 
Could he actually win that race? New York polls close on election day at 9 p.m. So once you start seeing some of the polls coming in in New York State as it goes across the country, that will be one of the races that I'm going to watch very closely. The polls do show sort of neck and neck or lead down maybe by four points, which in New York for a Republican is a miracle yeah. in and of itself. But it's not just Lee Zeldin, who's a great friend, and I think he's got a real shot. It's also the attorney general's race in the state of New York. The current AG in New York is Letitia James. Crime in New York is off the charts. Yeah. This is her job, and she's spending the bulk of her time and state resources pursuing Donald Trump. I think a lot of New Yorkers are completely fed up with that, and that race is now even with the Republican candidate. So wow. if New York starts to look at around 9, 9.30 at night on election night, like Lee Zeldin and Michael Henry, the AG candidate, that they're winning that race, then you can guarantee it's gonna be a red tsunami. That would be an amazing night. We're gonna see how your predictions hold up. I always have good confidence in what you're doing. It's always great to have you here. Thank you for joining us once again and look forward to your next trip to Nashville to be with us. It's always a pleasure, Governor. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for our audience, I know you're going to want to check out the Monica Crowley podcast and more. Uh, you can get her wisdom on that podcast, as a lot of Americans are uh, signing up to do. Also, find the links for all of the things that Monica's up to at Huckabee.tv. It'll take you right there to it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.